Hi everybody, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs and welcome to our Happy Friday show. Hi everybody, I'm so happy to be back home and be here live in studio for our Happy Friday show. This past few days have been amazing, but it's always good to be home. Now, of course, many of you know that I took a trip. We took an RV trip all the way out to the West Coast to Oregon, spent some time with family, lots of cuddles with my grandbaby, and so now it's back to reality. And I really miss those cuddles, everyday cuddles, but um, having a little bit of a withdrawal, so I, good, th good thing that we have FaceTime. So uh, thanks everybody for being here, of course. We have a happy Friday cocktail like always. And so this time I wanted to do something fun. So part of our uh, trip was spent at the Oregon coast. I had a beach house we spent two days in. It was wonderful. It was really windy on the beach. And I've kind of been on this kick as you uh, may have noticed in the past few Friday shows that I want to take classic cocktails and kind of goodernize them. I like, I don't like my cocktails to be super sweet, so I like them very well balanced. So I take classic beach cocktails that are usually just a sugar bomb and try to kind of tweak them a little bit, make them work for me. So that is what I've done today. And I thought it would be appropriate to take a cocktail that I've always really loved the flavor, but never been able to have more than one because it's so sweet and it's sex on the beach. So sex on the beach is usually a, a lot of juice, but we are changing it. Of course, since this was a family trip to the beach, I'm calling it love on the beach. So in here we have vodka and peach schnapps. That peach schnapps is really what gives it flavor, but I lessen the amount of schnapps just so that we can lessen the sweetness. There is cranberry juice, just a little bit of orange juice, and then sparkling water makes it, makes you get all the flavor but not all the calories and sugar. So cheers, everybody. It's pretty too, very pretty. So happy Friday. Tasty, right? What do you think, Delicious. producer? Delicious. Cheers. cheers. So lots to talk about today. Um, I wanted to show you, if you got our newsletter, I sent a few photos from our trip in the newsletter, but I wanted to just show you a few more. So we drove out to Oregon and spent a couple of days in the Mount Hood forest. Uh, we rented a cabin there for two nights where we stayed in total, totally in the woods. It was amazing. Well, this one I wanted to show you first since the cocktail was love on the beach. So that was really inspired by this photo. Uh, it was windy when we we're at the beach, but it was beautiful, clear skies. So the little guy had a little trouble keeping his eyes open. And of course, that's the beach sunset. But I wanted to show you first the, the, um, the view from our cabin in the woods. We had direct views of Mount Hood between the trees. It was gorgeous. So it showed itself most, most of the time we were there. We loved, we went hiking. I'm, I told you last Friday of our little bear encounter or my bear encounter. This was before the bear incident. We had hiked and we were there um, by the river. And um, I wanted to show you this photo, Johan's pants that I had made for him. So that one, um, yeah, this one. <laughs> they were a little big. That is, um, I made the mistake of not adjusting the waistline because the pattern called for rolling down the waist and putting in an elastic band, but I did the ribbing and so I should have really shortened that waist. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the pants back home with her and so I'm gonna do a little do a little editing. Um, we spent a lot of time playing card games and the little guy was just as interested. He was trying to learn. Uh, uh, my kids taught me a game called hand and foot. So we played that all six of us like all the whole time. And there's a little family photo. We're trying to do selfies at the cabin. Um, so really, it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. I really had uh, loads of memories made, and so they're all gonna be in our memory bank. And so now my mic just fell down. I hope you can still hear me. Um, so that was really great. Uh, and I got 
no sewing done, zero. Yes, I took the sewing machine with me, but there was just no time. I, when I spent time with the family, I just wanted to soak all that up. And then of course we kind of drove and didn't really stop much. So there was not a lot of sewing, not any sewing. However, a lot of writing done. So I think I wrote a lot of patterns, a lot, lot of progress on the book. So that was very good, very good work. Um, so I wanted to start uh, check in. If you are new here, of course, make sure you say your name in the comments and where you're tuning in from. I was trying to get to the comments before the show, but I was too late. So there are um, lots of people with us today. Thanks for being here. It's a warm day here in Minnesota. It's supposed to get even steamier tomorrow. Uh, oh, I see a lot of people know the hand of foot game. That's great. It's a really great game. It really kind of is, is fun to play, play um, in a group like that. So now we have to find people or teach people how to play hand to foot here at home. So it's very fun. Uh, okay, so I wanted to just mention a few things about the sew along that's now finally getting here this coming Tuesday. So I wanted to just answer any of your last minute questions. So again, if you are, this is totally new to you, make sure you just go to my blog, geequaldesigns.com and um, hit the blog button there where you will see all the requirements that you need to have all the products or all the supplies and um, this coming Tuesday during tipsy Tuesday we'll do the first part and then the second part will be the following week so you have some time to work and it's not intended for you to sew with me of course next Tuesday I'll give you some tips on the start and you should just watch it and then you can always go back and rewatch when you start working on it yourself um, a couple of questions on, I've had so many emails about trying to get the interfacing, but remember I told you that I made my new version with the um, Soft and Stable, the foam product from By Annie. So uh, it's really nice to work with and it makes the bag stand up really nicely on its own. So that, I totally recommend using that if you can't find, I uh, actually recommend that using that over the craft tax. It's easier to work with. It's um, it's more moldable and so it's it's easier to work with. It was just not available when I wrote this pattern on the book. So I highly recommend that. And a lot of questions on if you need a walking foot, if you need a Teflon foot, you do not need a Teflon foot. I um, You do need a walking foot, ideally. Can you do without one? Possibly. But uh, my walking foot worked really well, even sewing the coated fabric. It did not stick at all. It really made it move. So, and it's not like we're sewing a whole lot on the coated. So that's why you really don't need a Teflon foot. If you don't have a walking foot, then possibly that Teflon foot will be helpful when stitching that coated fabric, but it's not necessary at all. Another question I got was what thread I used. I used just my regular Orfil thread that I use um, for most of my piecing work really well. Needle for my machine, I use always a 12 needle and that's what I use for the first one. I should say that it's okay to go up in size. I would not go to a narrower or a thinner um, needle. So either a size 12 or 80 or a size 14, uh, which is a 90 is what I would recommend. Um, anything else? So let's see, do we have any questions on anything regarding the sew along? I use foam for the handles, works really, really well. So don't worry about trying to find batting or use batting for your handles, foam is great. So I'm gonna show you some tricks on doing that, on turning the handles. Um, really cool trick, <laughs> very easy to do. Um, any other questions? Since I can't see them, I can't see the comments right now. Oh, there they are. Um, yeah, so Joanne's asking about the needle. I just told you that uh, either a size 12 or a 14 needle. You can do the non-stick needles. They work really great if you're using any kind of fusible spray for um, for the uh, for basting the backing and everything. And this is the spray that I like to use, the 505 temporary basting spray. spray. Um, what is the name of a gorgeous quilt on your right? Love the fabric. So we have right behind me is Lexi. That is a 10 inch square pattern. And then hanging on the ladder is Helena, also a 10 inch square pattern. And the little runner is um, stripped to be square from my Stripology 2 book. So using one and a half inch strips. Okay. Um, 
best place to get a Teflon foot for a brother. Like I said, you don't need a Teflon foot, so please don't go out and invest in anything that um, for this particular bag. If you want a Teflon foot for other stuff, uh, go for it, but uh, you don't really need it for this. Um, do you need the magnetic pins? No, you don't need them. I, um, I showed you these, the so tight uh, magnetic pins. I, I like to use them for mine, but you don't need to. I'm going to show you an alternate uh, method of, of basting or holding things together because you cannot pin into the coated fabric. So these are the so tight. They're little magnets that you can just kind of um, put on each side and it keeps your pieces together without damaging anything because it doesn't pin through. Um, I'm, I use this or if you don't have those, find yourself some Elmer's glue. School glue, the washable kind. So you can use that as well. Um, anything else? I, I talked to you last before we left about what you can do to prepare. You can do some cutting. I will be showing you some tricks on the cutting, but if you want to start cutting and be ready, you can. Absolutely, if you can, especially like the binding fabric, the handle fabric, um, and the squares. So cut that down. You can also cut your laminate, but I'm going to show you some tricks on, on that. Um, I did use a charm pack for the squares. Yeah. Um, okay. What do you think about using the laminated fabric on the handle? I would be hesitant on doing that at least both sides. I would be worried about turning that whole thing and cause it kind of is sticky. I haven't tried it, so it might work, but I, I don't know. I don't know about that one. What fabric was used on Lexi and Helena? So Lexi was a line from Moda from about three, the pattern came out three, four years ago. So that's, it's been a while. Um, I don't remember even what it was called. And then the Helena quilt is totally from my collection. So I just pulled red, black, and white squares from my bins of 10 inch squares and started playing. So that's not just one line. Um, do some, some of your Tipsy Tuesdays are not available and why? I wanted to make that one little table runner and the Tipsy is closed. Hmm. I don't know which table runner that is. They should all be on, if you go to my website and the Tipsy Tuesday links, there they take you to Facebook. Now, if you were looking on YouTube, we've only been on YouTube for a couple of months. So the Tipsy Tuesdays previous are not on YouTube. So just check out the website. It will take link you to the Facebook. So you should find it there. Um, yep, Amy, I said she is, she is look, linking it to you, linking it for you. Um, you can click right on the link. Um, okay, how do you baste with it? I don't, uh, if you're talking about this, the glue, it's, um, I'm gonna show you. It's just instead of using pins. So uh, not necessarily basting, that was the wrong word, but it's really kind of liquid pinning. So it really holds things stable before you stitch it. Keeps them together. Uh, will you be getting in any more hard copies of the book for the sew along? Unfortunately not. We are completely out of the print. Um, however, we, I have plans on just releasing the pattern individually sometime in the future, but it's not gonna happen in the next few weeks or anything. So unfortunately only we have, um, for the full book, we have the, the ebook version. Um, Okay, well, I was on GE Quilt Designs and looking for Kira. So then you just go to patterns. You can also, there's a search bar on the website. If you just go up to the search bar and type in Kira, Kira will pop up both the pattern, uh, paper pattern and the PDF. So easiest is to use that search button. Any information on the August sew along? No, no information now, but it's all coming together. I'm very excited about it. I uh, am working on the project right now, so it's going to be the bomb. I cannot wait to share more about it, but I want to get all the details together. So um, you will have some more information in the next couple of weeks about that for sure. Okay. Um, Ebooks are wonderful. That's good. I think that if that is all about um, that we have questions for the sew along, do you think we have any more questions? Let me take a sip and you can scroll through. I think we're good. That's great. I know everybody's excited. I saw somebody did a little head start and finished their bag already, which is great. 
it is pretty easy. It's a fast project. So normally bags can be kind of tedious and take some time, but this one it does not take any time uh, unless you decide to uh, add some bells and whistles to it. I wanted to give you just a little bit of uh, up say, update on a few things. So um, those of you may have not know that I scheduled two lectures for the Stripology Mixology lectures for uh, July. So we have two dates coming up in July, July 28th uh, at 1 p.m. and then July 31st at 9 a.m. I believe the 28th is a Tuesday and the, uh, or is it Tuesday or what, is it Tuesday? I think it's a Tuesday. And then the 31st is a Friday. So um, if you have not seen the lecture before, those two dates are available for a sign up um, and we've got plenty of spots open. I wanted to give you a little update on shipping with the United States Postal Service, the USPS. I, they are quite a bit delayed and now with COVID cases just spiking enormously everywhere, I know they are understaffed and they are working hard. Um, but first class mail is really, really slow. We've been seeing up to three weeks domestically even and uh, up to two months internationally. So that's what I'm talking about, first class mail. So that is if you order a, one, a single pattern or something that goes in a small envelope. Um, so I just wanted to give you a heads up because I'm getting a lot of emails asking questions and I only, always have the same answer. I really can't do anything and first class mail is not trackable. So I can't track it. Um, so at least domestic first class mail is not. So I can't really say much more than that. I know they're working hard. Um, I hope the changes to the post, uh, the head of the postal service is um, not gonna be a bad situation, but I've heard that they are eliminating some over time. So I hope that that's not gonna affect um, delivery of boxes. I know priority mail has been a bit better, but it's not great everywhere. It's bad in certain areas and I think that's where they have sorting stations that have been hit really hard uh, by COVID so I, I, I don't know. Now FedEx seems to be working really well, it's working good for us even though uh, sometimes I saw some stories that your packages are going in different directions but that's just how FedEx works. They have, they have sorting stations in certain cities so all the packages go there before they go out and that just wor works for them which logistically um, works and so if you're surprised that it went first um, hundreds of miles in the wrong direction before it came to you that's just how they operate so but it seems to be working well and it's really nice to get that tracking out the way um, so I wanted to just apologize for one thing so this restocking notification app that we have on the website where you can sign up to be notified if something comes back in stock it's been working so well for everybody but i want to apologize for the restock notifications that went out yesterday so we were just adding like we uh, you know random one pieces of bundles into inventory where the inventory had been off or we have gotten returns and i was trying to turn off the notifications so 50 people didn't get notified about one piece of um, fabric going into inventory, but for some reason it did go out to everybody. So I apologize if you got a notif notification and went to look and it was already gone. Uh, so that was my bad and I will not let that happen again. Um, otherwise the restocks worked well. We got Cosmo Teal back in stock yesterday and uh, I saw it was flying out today. I think we still have some left, so check that out. We got some more of the Stonehenge gradation, uh, 10 inch squares and five inch squares. So we have three, I believe three different colors of the 10 inch and uh, one or two of the five inch. So really, really cool fabrics there. And then of course we had some fabric come in while I was gone. Uh, we had one, uh, two new bundles that were listed while I was gone and one of them is already sold out, which was the Picoline. But the winter shimmer, I was glad to see that we still had some of that when I came back. So I wanted to start by showing you this. The winter shimmer is, um, this is called winter shimmer two because it is a second version of this line. We had this last year as well, but it's really beautiful me metallic by Jennifer Sampu for Kaufman. So it's uh, got a little bit both of gold and silver. I kind of love mixing that together. So very kind of subtle fabrics. Um, I know some of you made a quilt out of the winter shimmer they made of um, Elvira when for the sew along and it was just gorgeous. They're so kind of soothing 
And these are, even though they're metallic, I don't think they are holiday. They can be any time. They're very kind of wintry, all these grays, and then going into some taupes. This one is actually an ombre, which I think is always cool when I'm cutting strips from stuff like this, or if I cut squares, because I get a darker one or I get a lighter one. So it really kind of, it's like you're having two fabrics in one. And so there's three different uh, ones of these ombres. So this, this is the second one. And then the third one is kind of more of the bluish, bluish um, greens, really pretty stuff. And so this, and then we have three more of the kind of diagonal plaid, the light blue, the teal, and the darkest blue. So really pretty kind of water effect with just that little sparkle shimmer of the metallic. Winter shimmer too. Really pretty stuff. Um, and then we have some new, uh, we got a lot of one yard cuts in that we restocked. So all of the canvas has been restocked. We had a lot of interest in that. That was kind of getting really sparse for us. So a couple of new fat, uh, colors in there because I really, really like it as a basic. It's kind of a, a reminiscent of grunge, but it, it's still just kind of a one color. So it's a really a, a kind of a, almost reads like a solid, but has that texture of like a canvas, like a painter's canvas. And two more one yarders. These are really pretty fabrics from Louis and Irene. It's by a Swedish uh, designer and they're called Tomten. I just fell in love with these prints because this is so Scandinavian. Obviously she's a uh, Swedish designer and I just got two prints. So we're, I'm just, we just decided to sell them as one yards because there wasn't much in the line other than panels. So uh, just very, very Scandinavian as you can see. So we have the little Tomptons on gray with a Christmas tree and the sleigh. And then we have the a little bit larger Tomptons with some snowflakes um, on this light blue background. So these two are both in the store in the one yard cuts. So uh, we didn't get a lot of it. So I just wanted to tell you that those of you with Scandinavian heritage love this stuff. And we got more, more bundles. So we got a big shipment just, um, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. We had 25 boxes of fabric come in for, from an order that I placed in October at Quilt Market, um, but from a company called Stoff, which is a Danish company. And a lot of these were supposed to be delivered in March. And then of course, never, nothing came. And I didn't think that I was ever going to get any of it because of COVID and all this stuff. And so I was really excited and surprised when all of it came, <coughs> all of it came at the same time. So we have four new bundles to show you today. And the only apology I want to make is that, so I ordered these in October. Our volume has, of course, grown immensely since then. So we don't have a lot of each of those. So <coughs> just want to apologize beforehand. So please don't get mad at me if this sells out really fast because we just don't have more. So let me start by showing you this one. And they have, most of them have 12 SKUs. This one happens to have 13 SKUs because I just couldn't eliminate anybody. <coughs> So this one is called, let me see, uh, what was it called again? Um, looking for sea life. So it's a really, really nautical themed, but, but um, it's kind of, I love that it has kind of smaller prints too in mixed in with bigger prints. So we have the sailboats and kind of going from the dark Navy into the blues and um, just little specks of red in there. And so this will be perfect for like a marina quilt and um, anything kind of sea life connected. Um, love these sailboats, just a little hint of gold and gray in there. Just, I love these little specks of red. And then we have these um, shells, or I don't know if they're sand dollars or what. Um, and then we have fish. And then we have a few into the taupe. So we have the sailboats again and the birds, the seagulls. So a really, really pretty kind of sophisticated um, ocean or looking for sea life, it's called. Um, and again, this is the fabric company is Stoff and they are based in 
Denmark. The second line I'm going to show you has 10 skews in it. And this one is called sewing stuff. Uh, absolutely love this. So we'll start with the sewing machines, the vintage sewing machines in two colorways has the taupe and then this is a little bit more of a lighter gray and then we have um, thread and thimbles and measuring tapes in the two colors as well a, a kind of a beige and then a gray we have scissors in this taupe and then in this kind of magenta pink we have these buttons collection of buttons that goes with it in two colors um, and then this last one is the patterns the kind of clothing pattern graph paper really really fun it's called sewing stuff really fun kind of novelty fabrics fun to kind of throw with and i could totally see pulling in some more of these colors dark purples a little bit of black for an accent and there's kind of a little bit of green in there too so you can totally kind of spruce it up if you wanted to use it all in a line but i think this would be really cute for all kinds of sewing accessories too little zip zipper bags and stuff like that so sewing stuff and then this one is a, um, a line that I kind of mixed in some of my basics. I loved, I love to find unique things that are a unique colorway. So this is, uh, the line is called Marble Yard. And I don't really know why it's called that, but I just loved kind of this black with the olive green and these violets in there. So um, just loved kind of that take on a colorway. So it has kind of supporting that and then a little bit of green speckled in there and I love this kind of a grayish brown so let me show you these first and then I can show you the basics that I added into it um, and then just a little bit of orange thrown in there for the branches and here's the marble print that was kind of the main thing of it um, we have the greens with the specks and then this print also in the lighter green and then I threw in these are from Stoff too. They're printed, but they look like um, look like linens. Really pretty texture. And so I did the two different uh, purple and kind of magenta, and then the green and the gray. So these this is Marble Yard. Very pretty, very unique coloring uh, of this. So great basics to throw in there. And so I feel like you could kind of pair up a print with a more solid looking fabric without having to add anything and then we have last but not least a line that made me fall in love with stuff is uh, you may have seen the the fabric that I used for Johan's quilt um, that I brought to him the Lucy quilt that was made with raccoon fabric so this is the same style even the raccoons are in here but it's pretty panda so there's pandas and um, other critters but I just love kind of the modern coloring the modern artwork so it's whimsical but yet kind of cool um, so love this uh, kind of grayish blues and then gray so kind of monochromatic so it could could be for any either gender and this fun really really fun dots and then we have the animal faces or outlines of the animal faces here in this these prints and the blue and then we have one kind of a darker uh, basic that I threw in there that kind of goes with everything so it's it looks black but it's not it's it's more of a, a blue so this is pretty panda again really pretty fun great fabrics for I don't know I think it'd be pretty for a little boy or a girl <clears throat> so that is all the new stuff but we have more in the house that has not been cut yet so we've got more to show you on tuesday but this is brand new and i'm really excited i've already snatched up some i knew these were gonna go fast so any questions on those do you see any questions pop up mr producer mm-hmm 
Oh, it's so nice to hear that you guys missed us. We will be around now for a while. That's for sure. Love Pretty Panda. Yeah, new moms like neutral nurseries. I, I totally agree. And I, I would probably, if I was a new mom, I would probably uh, like a more neutral. And then you can kind of throw in color as the, as the babies get older and then maybe have their own preferences as they grow up. <clears throat> I receive an error message when trying to set the notify me for pickling. It's because we won't be getting it back. So if you cannot get a notification, that just means we won't be getting any more. So um, that's why we just take it off because um, it's not, not going to be available. Who is the manufacturer of this line? Yes, yeah, Stoff, S-T-O-F, one F. Uh, yes, very, very nice fabrics. A really nice quality, kind of thicker. Uh, I love working with them. Really nice to sew with. Um, Gudrun, what, what book is the strip? The runner, are you talking about the strip quilt and the runner? Um, uh, this one is in the Stripology 2. So there's Stripology and then Stripology 2. Those are the first Stripology books. They're all, both of them made, made with one and a half inch strips. Everything in there is with one and a half inch strips. <clears throat> all right, any other? Raccoons and pandas and pigs don't usually hang out together. That is true, but you know what? In the fabric world, you can make anything happen. Yeah, so there's, uh, actually there's rabbits. I don't see pigs. There's bears, rabbits, and pandas, and the raccoons. Interesting combination of buddies, but they're all cute together. That's all that matters. Um, did I like motorhome traveling? Yes, I actually did. It, it was pleasantly surprised. And uh, we were just talking about it. It's like the perfect travel right now with COVID because you are totally kind of self-sustained and contained. So we just, all you do is stop at gas stations. You don't even have to go in to use the bathroom uh, or to get a snack or anything. You just have it all in the motorhome and um, you just get the gas and keep on moving. You get to a campsite, you hook up, and you don't have to talk or interact with anybody, and it's just all good. So if, if ever we were to be forced into quarantine, to quarantine for 14 days, this is what I recommend. Just get uh, rent a motorhome and get lost for 14 days. <laughs> um, so that is, it was really good. I, I was pleasantly surprised. Are you going to be having more new kits for Strippy Forest? Yes, they are being cut right now, so hopefully we will list them um, early next week. As you know, the kids, half of the kids that work for me were with me on the trip, so we were understaffed in that department. So we're, they're kind of getting back into it, so they will be um, cutting over the weekend and Monday for sure, getting everything listed again. Kay Wells is asking, are all of your books available on your site? All of the books that are in print are available on my website, yes. Um, except for I don't have one that was a leisure arts book, but I don't know if it, they're keeping it in print anymore. That was a really old book. Um, will you be getting Winter Shimmer 2 back in? Oh, I didn't realize we were out. I can try that one. I'm not sure um, because that one I ordered also a really long time ago. It all depends on the fabric company. Some people have a really short window from placing an order until it ships. Others have a long, long window. So it's really hard to get reorders. Um, Kathleen says, what did you think of the Oregon coast? I absolutely love the Oregon coast. It was interesting just to have all the mountains there, uh, great views. It's of course very different from a California coast or uh, the Gulf Coast, Florida. Atlantic coast, very different, but very pretty. It was, it's cooler. The, of course, water is very cold or was pretty cold, but it's just gorgeous where we were lots of nice sand and uh, very pretty. I, I really enjoyed it. It's very different from, I, I encourage everybody that haven't been there, check it out. It's, it's really unique. What is the red and black quilt behind me? That is Helena, one of my 10 inch square patterns. How close are you about making a decision on your quilt retreat? Oh, it's all in the works. You know, I've been gone all last week. So um, everything has been on hold since I was on vacation. I really tried to cut myself out. So those of you that are already signed up for a retreat, you'll be hearing from me probably next week. 
Um, okay, what route did you take coming back? We went, well, I really loved Western Montana, driving through Idaho, um, Coeur d'Alene in that area, and also like just Oregon. So we drove the same way back um, through Western Montana, but then we cut into Wyoming and South Dakota and, to, and went through South Dakota all the way back. Uh, so now you're back in Minnesota, you should look up for the comet Neowise. Oh, okay. Never heard of that. Karen is asking, how many children do I have? I have three kids and one grandchild. The prince of the family, Mr. Johan. Um, Robin says, any openings for the retreat? No, it was completely full for all three sessions. Um, so that is not a chance to get into that one uh okay did you like the jack mormons i had more fun with them than the regulars okay she's probably replying somebody else i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> oh neowise that's probably i don't know i don't know what you guys are talking about i'm out of the conversation did you stop at quilt shops along the way actually we did not because so when we were driving through towns it was just off hours and we were kind of like getting to Oregon. I could not wait. So we were kind of just needing to get there. I could not wait to get my hands on that baby. So that was kind of a rush. And then um, the towns that we drove through, we were at odd hours as well. So I didn't stop. We're also just because COVID. <laughs> I didn't want to just risk anything. It's also really hard to some, you know, you don't know what the parking situation is with a store you haven't been before. So driving a 31 foot motorhome is not fun if you, there's no parking. <clears throat> uh, was it hard to get reservations for camping? No, actually I was surprised. We didn't make anything beforehand cause we just wanted to kind of play it by ear. So, oh, um, so we just kind of called ahead the same day and everywhere we tried, there were spots. So that was very easy, very easy. We lucked out on that. There's not, I, I wouldn't say there's a whole lot of traffic in the campgrounds, I can just imagine them being a lot busier, you know, in a normal year. But, um, but yeah, so that was easy. They're very easy. And I could um, recommend, there's one in uh, Western Montana that was just beautiful, St. Regis Campground. It was really nice, great people, super clean. I swear this is the cleanest bathrooms I've ever, ever seen at a campsite. You could literally lick the floors. I didn't do that, but they were really great. So if you ever in that area, St. Regis is kind of, um, so it's between Coeur d'Alene and uh, Missoula, I think, so, somewhere around there. It's It was beautiful, beautifully wooded area, uh, nice spots, trees, it's just awesome. I wish I could have stayed there longer, but I was on a mission. <laughs> um, Wyoming to South Dakota to Minneapolis was a beautiful drive. Yes, it was. Once, at least kind of the first part then. Um, it's just fun to drive through the whole country and seeing the different areas. Um, you know, of course, I think each area has its charm in its own way, but it's just so interesting how areas are so different. And even if they're wooded areas like we have in Minnesota, lots of woods, but they're so different from, from the wooded areas in Oregon, the Oregon woods, it's just like, it's just really fun to see different experiences, really loved it. Uh, between the two places we stayed in, we all really loved the cabin just because we are outdoorsy people. Um, we would have probably loved the beach. We loved the beach, don't get me wrong, but we would have um, probably gotten more out of that. It was just really, really windy the day that we were there. So sand was kind of blowing and we would have spent more time outside. But at the cabin, we were outside the whole day in the woods, um, even though there were bears. Just Mr. Honey Producer make, made sure to never turn his back to the woods. <laughs> Cheers to the bears. <laughs> Um, in other news, I have very exciting news personally. While we were gone and we came back, we have a whole new deck and patio and we're so excited. I finally have some outdoor area to hang out in um, during summer. So we have a deck, we have a patio, 
we just don't have any furniture. <laughs> so that is our mission uh, this weekend. And we're working on that, getting some outdoor furniture, which is no easy feat these days. Everything is sold out everywhere. Everybody's doing home improvements and getting new furniture. So uh, we're going to keep trying and keep trying to find something so we can hang out outside. <laughs> um, so that is all I was going to show you. I am, like I said, I'm excited to be home. I'm working on stuff. The books book is coming along really well. I also waiting for me when I get home, three more quilts from the quilters for the book. So they will be bound. And, and I actually grabbed a couple, a few with me on the trip and photographed them on the road. So that was fun, but it's coming along and I'm working on that other quilt for August. And can't wait to share that with you. But we will be, uh, let's have a, a winner, our live winner. Did you get that ready? There she is. Jean Hall is our live winner. Congratulations. You have won a $25 gift card to the GEQuiltDesigns.com store. And we will get that to you. If you see this, please send us a message so we can get you your gift card. Now, there will be a show next Friday, of course. I'll be home next Friday, 3 p.m. Central. And, of course, I can't wait for Tuesday tipsy tuesday this coming tuesday 7 p.m central time and we're gonna kick off our sew along and get going on that grab and go tote i can't wait so uh i'll see you then right cheers everybody have a great great weekend mm -hmm.